Greetings out there in YouTube land. This is Morris, man. As always, I thank you guys for coming to my channel. Today I'm going to do a video, and I've done a video like this before, and it's, it's kind of interesting and fun to do another one because you don't know what you don't know. So, you know, sometimes you go in search of finding the answers to your questions as opposed to assumptions. And a lot of the assumptions are understandable, you know. So I'm going to touch on the music of business. Because I've been a professional musician since I was my 20s, a sound engineer, producer, songwriter, uh, you name it, I've done it. And I mention this not to brag, it's just to give you my credentials as far as when it comes to the music business, I know a little bit about it. Because I've been involved in it for, what, 30 some years, you know. So I thought I would share some of my, I guess, knowledge. Because uh, I just recently posted a video entitled, Do Not cover these artist songs on YouTube because if, if so, you're going to get flagged. Meaning that if you decide, oh, I'm going to teach you guys how to play some Prince stuff with Prince original music in the background, they shut you down quick. Uh, the Prince people shut you down quicker than anybody. You get emails from attorneys. Uh, then uh, they force YouTube to jump on your pound on you and put a strike on your account. When you just only want to do is just show people how to play these great songs. You're not making any money doing this. Any copyrighted stuff that I do, I don't see a damn of, of, of money. And, and, and I'm not here for that. I'm just here to show you guys some chords. You know, but I respect the fact that the record company and sometimes the artists decide that they don't want their music distributed in that manner. I totally understand that. I totally respect it. I don't have an issue with it. Uh, so, you know, sometimes I get comments about, uh, comments that people don't understand how the business of music works because a uh, person just sent me a comment regarding that video saying that it's a shame that the, the artists won't allow you to do their covers because there's some artists that are real cover friendly they don't mind you doing it here's the problem it's not the artist look at the artist in these terms just like you you go to work every day you got a boss Unless you're a manager in up or in upper management, you don't make business decisions for the company. You just come in, they tell you what to do, your bosses, and then you get paid and you go home. And that's basically the same thing with most artists. They're just employees. They don't own the rights to these songs. They don't have any say so when it comes to those type of uh, copyright issues because they're just employees. But, you know, some people don't know that. They think that the artist is controlling everything and uh, this is how it's going to be done. No, the artist is just a simple employee. You know, there are exceptions like the late Prince and like the Eagles. When you become that successful and carry that much cloud of juice, as they say, yeah, you can make those type of decisions with the record company. But for the most part, the record company makes those decisions as far as, you know, the copyright issues. It, uh, the artist got nothing to do with it, you know. And I was going to really go into this long thing about the music business, but I'm not going to do that because that would take about 20, 30 minutes. But the only thing I can really say is... uh. You don't know what you don't know, and it's not the artists, it's the record companies, you know, uh, <coughs> again, with the exception of Prince and some other people, because I am going to touch on the Prince thing, because I went through a period of letting people know how things really are or were, you know, and some people got upset because they and visualize it this way when it's actually this way. And what I mean by that is when Prince went on that tangent and putting slave on his cheek. And the first thing I pose the question is, how many uh, millionaire slaves do you know? None, you know. And here's the deal with the Prince thing. Because I got to share this, guys, this with you guys. Because you don't know what you don't know. And if you don't know, you assuming this. Prince, when he was 17, got his record deal. By the time he's about 18, he was completed the first album. Prince, to this day, 2018, got one of the best lucrative record deals in record history. So it ain't like, uh, you know, the the a good example of the the, the Supremes. You know, uh, one of them died on welfare when their when their product made millions and millions of dollars. So and you figure, and you ask yourself, how did that happen? Because Barry Gordy screwed them. You know, so Prince didn't get screwed. Prince got an extremely good deal, and apparently that wasn't enough for him, you know, because um, the whole thing about bitching about, you know, trying to get the rights to your sons, because this is how it works. You got talent. You go to a record company to help you finance your product because you're broke, because if you weren't broke, you could do all that by yourself and say, screw the record companies. I'm going to do all this by myself and, and, and reap all the benefits. It doesn't work that way. You come in 
with your pockets turned inside out and got a damn to rub two dams together. And uh, the record company said, OK, this is what we're going to do. You do got talent. We got the money to help finance you. So is there, so so uh, the deal is going to be this. We finance you and we get a, pro a, a proceeds from 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 the profit. And we're going to get the majority of the proceeds because we're the one who put all this money in because. They can finance your album because it takes a lot of money to go into the studio with professional musicians, not that basement studio thing. We're talking about state-of-the-art professional recording studio, and they get state-of-the-art, or should I say world-class musicians, to play on your stuff. They got to get paid. The studio people got to get paid to book the time and got, you know, they got to get paid. That's That could be sometimes millions of dollars before you even bring them or, prof, or, or get them a return on their money. You know, so they didn't already put up all this money up front for you. And guess what? If your album sucks and it tanks and nobody buys it, they have all that money. You know, most people don't realize how it works. So it ain't an issue of the record company screwing them. Because if they felt that way, go finance your own album. You know, don't show up at my, at my company asking to get a record deal. Go finance your own album. Because it takes a lot of money to put together the product. It takes even more money to, to market the product. Because that's the thing. You can have the best product in the world. If nobody knows nothing about it, you know, what, what's the point? You know, so they have a lot at stake. And they're the ones that are taking the risk. Because if it flops on from their, their end, or should I say from their perspective, they lose millions of dollars. If it flops on your end... Oh, well, I just spent some time putting together the product, but it didn't cost me any money to put together the product, just a little bit of my time. So it's not a big deal. But most of us don't realize that they're not in the music business and how it works. Because, again, record companies put up a lot of money. Music videos, they can cost up to a million dollars now. You know, so and, and guess who pays for that? The record company. And then once this product has been put together and they marketing it, when it starts to sell, uh. They get a percentage, but first before you see any money, you because all that money is considered kind of a loan towards the product, finished product. All that money spent on recording, all that money they spent on marketing, all that money got to be recouped from, from by the, for the record company. So when that record starts to sell, the first people to start to see that money is the record company recouping their losses as far as the, well, we spent $2 million here as far as the whole product. You know, and then after that's been paid off, then whatever starts to come in, you get a percentage of that, and they still get a percentage of that too. You know, but uh, there are a lot of people that don't understand that because they're not musicians and never been in the business. You know, so sometimes uh, I will post videos to say, mm, Morris, man, thanks for letting me know that because I didn't know. I mean, I didn't know. But, uh, you know, there you have it. That's how it works. Now, if you're one of them people that say, I don't want to deal with no record, record executive heads and, and the politics behind me, I'm going to finance my own. If you could do that, God bless you. You know, that's wonderful. If you can go in and put together an album yourself and market it yourself, because there's some musicians that have been pretty successful with that. Uh, Miss, what's that? Master P. You know, Master P basically did everything by himself. He got all his publishing, all his rights to the, his, his, his product. Because, again, as an artist, the standard deal is the songs that you, uh, you know, release are the are uh, the rights and the ownership uh, of the record company not the artist unless you worked out a deal with the uh, the record company and in most cases that is not a standard deal by no means the record company is not giving you all this stuff up front you know it's either sometimes uh they will give you a percentage or sometimes they say hey this is a standard contract if you don't want it go next door see if you can get a record deal with those guys and see if they're going to spend two million dollars on you up front to produce your product and then get it out there but, you know, that whole Prince thing was just ridiculous because, again, Prince got the best record deal in history to this day. You know, 30, 40 years later, still better than most of us. Uh, and then, you know, he had a lot of creative freedom. You know, that was the first time that they let an 18 or 17 year old produce his first album. Because normally that never, ever happens. Normally what happens is someone produces your first album. It's a success. And then now you got a little clout and juice to, to haggle with the record company. Say, hey, I want to produce my sophomore album. You know, I can do this. And they most likely let you do it. But they never, ever let you do it the first time out. Never. So, you know, that whole thing with Prince tripping, he was just tripping. You know, unfortunately, and we all are guilty of this. We sometimes give people too much 
that they don't should have or don't deserve. And then when you shut it down and realize you don't want to be in the fool and, and give them too much and you shut it down. Now they feel a sense of entitlement. Hey, where's the rest of this? And where's my, you know, so they created that monster, you know, uh, the record company created that monster, you know, but uh, I just find it, I guess, appalling and, and insulting because this is really ridiculous. As you guys know, you can't touch print stuff on YouTube. If you do it less than a day, it's coming down and you got a strike on your account. You know, and I'm like, again, okay, I can respect that, even though we are the ones to help make you who you are, you know. But so now we can celebrate your music and actually help promote it for you for free. But I can respect it. I'm not tripping. But this is what I'm tripping on, you know. That whole Prince thing where, again, you cannot do any of his stuff. You can't even do this because I can understand, you know, you playing along with the original music in the background showing chords. You can't even do this. You don't have the original music. You're just showing on, on YouTube just the chords. No copyrighted music in the background. Just you and your guitar. You still get flagged. And then you can actually beat that because technically uh, you're not violating, but you will get flagged first. And now you got to go through the, pr the process of getting unflagged and sending emails and back and forth to get this mess cleared up. Because uh, I guess it's they call it algorithms where uh, it's a computer thing that searches for, t for names. And when they hit names and it flags it, uh, sometimes they just flag you without even listening, watching the video. I've had that, you know, they just, based on the title, they got me, you know, and then I have to go in and get this straightened out, you know, but uh, here's the thing that really insulted my intelligence. Okay, Prince, we understand you don't want your stuff being played or, or, or covered, fine. But then, in the same breath, when the last album was released before he passed away, he was promoting it on YouTube. I'm like, let me get this straight. The same dude that flagged me now want me to buy his shit, and he's promoting it on a channel that I can't play his shit. Get the fuck out of here. You know, get the fuck out of here. And I'm going to end it on that note. Till next time, take care and thanks for watching.